Hi, welcome to Sacred Enzyme. I'm Stacy, and I wanted to take a, a minute to go over a quick document that I've been reading about in conjunction to our demolition, reselling, reclaiming business of the 1900s where they were uh, dismantling all these old world structures. And so one of the questions I had was, how did they get these things to start with? And so I want to read this little thing about this article. It's called, Whose Property Is It Anyway? Okay. So it says, blame our forebearers. Like many time-honored American traditions, uh, the concept of unclaimed property was first established all the way back in ancient times in feudal England. And the term es cheat described, it comes from a Latin word meaning to fall out. So under English common law, any lands held by tenure, which is occupied by someone other than the owner, were returned to the feudal lord upon the death of that person. But England, everything was a monarchy. So the monarchy owned everything. So if you had land, it was because the monarchy granted it to you but it wasn't yours you were a steward of the land you were not an owner you were a steward so the steward of the land is not the same as the owner so when england came over here and took this the united states before it was united states they used the system of achievement so people that were here and were living in homes they took them away from them. They kicked them out. They kicked them out because it was their, their land now. So there's nothing they could do about it. It's pretty much what it says here. So the idea behind it's simple. When a landholder died, went to war, got convicted. Wasn't that a great way to steal all those Irish people's land, right? Is charge them with a bunch of crimes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's charge people with a bunch of crimes if if you can't find any other way to get them, right? If they're not dead. And, uh, and you know, y you got to get rid of them somehow, right? Because you got you, you to take that land. So, I mean, yeah, this is how they took over. They just arrested these people, took them prisoner, and they took their land. You know, the way that it went. It says, so the king granted it to his favorite people. And then they became the tenants in chief, but they didn't own nothing. They didn't own nothing. So a common early common law forms of achievement, achievement apply only to real estate, right? Ownerless goods. So it says inspired by English common law and the Magna Carta. Property rights are among the most uniquely important elements of U.S. law. So important that they were codified in the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. There's no mistake that it is in there. It is in there. There's no mistake. And then it was talking in here. I'm trying to find the paragraph where I was reading about how the monarch just takes everything back. So I thought that that was hilarious. So yeah, this is how they got it. It says that I... Uh, um, so it says, over the years, there's been several statutory changes to the U.S. unclaimed property laws, many resulting from court challenges in the 30s and 40s. The first nationwide unclaimed property law debuted in the, uh, debuted, debuted in the 19, 1954 and was drafted by the Commission on Uniform State Laws. This model act was commonly known as the Uniform Disposition of Unclaimed Property Act, UD, UPA, but it soon became apparent that multiple liabilities were being applied to save property holders doing business in different states. Yeah, I guess if you lived in New York and you were trying to steal somebody's property in Florida, right? You were looking for all the people that got kicked off that, you know, nobody found out about their places yet, right? All the colleges were taken, but let's look for the rest of the stuff, right? Let's go to all of these hidden little spots like where I live, in the middle of the state of Florida, in Podunk Town. You know, there's one town here, it's called, um, oh gosh, what is the name of that called? But it means, it means stone. Lithia, Lithia. 
and it means stone in Greek. But guess what? If you go to Lithia, Florida, it's out in the middle of nowhere. And you know what company is there? Mosaic. They got the whole place dug up out there. So are they looking for some kind of stones in Lithia? Which, you know, Lithia is a Greek word. Lithia is a Greek word. Another Greek city we can add to the list of Greek cities. So I'll have to take a, a trip to Lithia, you know, uh, next time. But uh, Lithia means stone, and it's Greek. So maybe we'll find some Greek evidence there. You know, in these old towns that are around where I live is where we're going to find the best evidence of old archaeology that has not been damaged. And we probably see it in Mountain Lake, but we'll never get in Mountain Lake because all the robber barons, that's their hideout. And nobody gets in. No one gets in unless you work there. And you can't get in there. I've been out there only one time, and I'm 53 years old. And... If that don't tell you anything, then that should tell you something. So with that note, I just thought it was interesting that um, the Norman conquest of England started the feudal, uh, the monarch becoming the sole owner of the kingdom. And then after that, that's when they started doling out the property and these people became stewards. So the steward thing came all the way over. So if you needed to get somebody off their land and... and the only other way would probably be to arrest them or something like that or put them in the nut house. Do you remember how we had all these insane asylums that were full of people? I'd go insane if somebody came and tried to kick me out of my home and take take me and my kids out and take everything that we had. I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, I mean, this gives you a completely different perspective on the insane asylums and all of these things. And, you know, there was some kind of major weather event that happened in the very first part of the 1900s, 1901 or 1900, because in 1902, they ran out of coal. And why would you run out of coal unless it was really, really cold, right? But then in 1906, they had all of those earthquakes in San Francisco and fires. So there were some kind of cl climactic weather events that were happening in the first part of the 1900s. And then they used that as an opportunity to flip everything over. But, you know, it's a lot of layers to this, a lot of layers. So this is the achievement process. So yeah, it's just as I thought. They, uh, by different ways, charging people with crimes or, you know, you have a, a takeover, colonization, you know. Uh, so the question is, is do we really even own this country? I mean, yeah, we did fight for it, but could they get us on a technicality? I mean, I don't know, but then everybody could get them on a technic, uh, you know, Europe on a, I mean, England on a technicality because they had it first too, right? So I don't know. The way I feel about it is, is that the earth belongs to mother nature, to mother. There's the earth is God and you can't own that. You can't own that. You can die. You can't take none of this stuff. It's just stuff. Just stuff. That's why all these people worry about having the best of everything. It's such a waste of time. You could be doing so much better things with your finances than wasting on material wealth. That's just, I mean, there's no fulfillment in it, really. When the fun is gone, you know, you just move on to another thing. And most people, I think then they're not even really interested in half the stuff they have. They just get it because they think it gives them status. So I guess it's all part of the ego. And I would say that's probably the lower chakras. You know, when you're in a materialistic sense, you're in your, you're living in your lower chakras, you're vibrating low. But with anyway, that's it for that one. And uh, I just wanted to explain a little bit about what I found up, uh, found out about these properties and how these people were getting them because that's how they were getting them. They were just cheating this property and it was through a different, a few different times. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, allergies. <laughs> we go through this every time. But with that, I'm going to leave it on this note. I appreciate you giving me nine minutes of your time. And so that was the second part to the demolitions of uh, business of New York. And we're going to get into this further because there's so many things that have been distorted. And so we're going to follow the money and the clues in plain sight. So thanks for stopping in. And when you find me, I'll be here. We're living the past, present, future, all at the same time. 
So, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.